Welcome everyone, Quistine here with my in-depth game guide on how to play Aliens Dark Descent. The previous video I did was an essential game guide, covering really the essentials of the game, focus more on the early game. This is a late game guide. Like, this is the kind of guide where you have information that you'll go you're going to be using throughout the entire playthrough, because if a game like XCOM Enemy Unknown or XCOM 2 or Phoenix Project has taught me anything or taught people anything, is like... Knowing what the destination is in these kind of games, knowing what you're aiming for is very important in su your success. So knowing what technologies you're interested in, knowing how to level your class, knowing what to worry about and not what not to worry about is going to be important. Now, before I get into all of that, let me answer the essential question. Is this game worth playing? That is a pretty important question. Is $40 40 euros? It is not a full price game is not the triple a game it's a middle market game that's what focus uh, the publisher does and Tendalos, the developer also does they also made battlefleet gothic armada and armada 2. now i got a free copy from the publisher would i have purchased it otherwise yes i would have largely because i had love I, I loved uh gothic armada 1 and 2 and I did play a lot of XCOM and Free Phoenix Project, XCOM Enemy Unknown, uh, Chimera Squad, and XCOM 2. I haven't really played many of those in quite a long time. But I certainly have played those games when they came out quite a bit. So I was very interested in this particular uh, title. <laughs> on accounting of who made it and on account of the fact that it is within that kind of genre, at least on a surface level. What this game appears on a surface level to be is a real-time version of you know, things like XCOM or Phoenix Project, Phoenix Point. Uh, but in reality, what I would describe it as is a stealth strategy game. Now, this is very appropriate, I suppose, in the Alien universe. It, it, it also kind of works and also doesn't. There are certainly issues with the way the game is. Because stealth strategy games inherently suck, right? Like, it is very appropriate for in, in its game, but, like, stealth strategy just doesn't work. And there is something lacking, because the way it works is you have a squad, right? As you would expect. Though, really, they should drop the term squad and use the term fire team, because that's really what you have. A squad is 12 people, 10 to 12 people, but either way, you get the idea. So you have a squad like in those games, but it's real time. But you don't have individual social control. Instead, you control the squad as a whole. That creates with it, uh, and especially in movement, that creates uh, problems. Because let's say you want to move your sniper into a position to kill a particular enemy. You can't just select your sniper to move that sniper there. I mean, I guess you could, and he would be the one taking point, but it is finicky, to say the least. It is a problem to the ally, like that fine control. And that kind of fine control would be pretty essential in this game because you can die very, very quickly. But it's also kind of a survival game because you really want to avoid a lot of fights. Like, if you get involved in a firefight in an open space, you've done something wrong to a degree or another. Like, sometimes you don't care, but generally speaking, if you're getting in involved in a firefight against aliens, you are setting up a strong gun line with turrets behind you, and it's a narrow corridor where they're just going to be annihilated in that battle. If you're fighting surrounded by aliens on all sides, you're likely going to lose a lot of people. Now, I've finished this game. The progress is 89%, but this is just before the final deployment where I finished the game. I just loaded the save. Uh, there's not really much to spoil on the missions. Now, what you need to know, though, this isn't a sandbox game. Operation you do have a bunch of maps, degree. but the progression is pretty linear. And the idea, I would say, is maybe you could play it where, you know, the first time around you're just fin doing the story objectives and you're ignoring exploration. But really, you can, in one deployment even, or two or three deployments, because you can redeploy. Like, the way the mission design works is you deploy to a mission, you do some objectives, you get out of there, uh, and then you deploy again. And the idea is you do a mission. Like, the first mission is Dead Hills. I missed only one thing, and I think I did, what, two free deployments in this particular playthrough, and I haven't gone back there since. I missed a couple of things, but I got most of the data pads, did all the objectives. It just missed ones, you know, take, apparently, in a crate, whatever. But I got the vast majority of things that I needed um, from that one go. And then you move from mission to mission. I've rarely found a reason to go back. Now, the problem with this, just to 
make this point. The issue is that I think the replayability is not going to be that high. Now, this is not because the linear the, that you have a linear mission um, structure, like you have one mission, then another, and then another. No, the issue is that the way each mission works is that you have one objective after another and part, large parts of the map can be cut off until you finish an objective then they open up because whatever reason that's probably the weakest point of the game like the mission design i would argue is the weakest point of the game the gameplay core the atmosphere the how faithful it is to the aliens universe whatever you may say about the aliens uni uh, uni uh, aliens universe it does have its own issues but for all that um, for all its faithfulness, the mission design just doesn't really work. Like these kind of games work better when you have choice, and here you're kind of like stuck down one particular path. When you enter a map, you are always going going to go down that particular path. So the replayability isn't necessarily the best. It can be fun, but it does have its uh, its issues. So just be aware that if you are going to play this game, you're likely going to play it only once or twice, and then it's not necessarily going to be that great to replay that's my perspective now it is kind of interesting because i think back to battlefleet gothic armada 2 which these guys also made which had certainly a path to missions but it also had a lot of sandbox elements but it dragged on too long here the problem is the exact opposite it's like there's no sandbox right you could say oh you have these maps and maps you can explore whatever way you want but you really can't because until you unlock things through doing the primary objectives, you are fairly limited in where you can go and how you can go there. Some maps are more open than others, but for the most part, you are going to go down a particular path. You are going to have some choices like, oh, do I go to the room to the left or the right? But you're always going for that same objectives. You're not deviating from that. And I think that's an issue. Another major issue, I would argue, is that each mission has an infinite number of enemies. Doesn't matter how long you're staying there. Doesn't matter how many thousands of, of aliens you're killing you're going to have an infinite number of enemies that particular element does suck like when you think about phoenix point when you think about xcom there is a limited a finite number of any enemies to deal with uh, in any particular mission and i think that works far better for this type of game than what they decide to do here so with that with everything there set let's talk about the game here is your command deck this is where you go on missions you select where you're going to deploy i'll cover the deployment thing but what is important to know about the command deck is you can go to a mission and do free two free deployments like deploy once get out once you've gotten enough done or you feel comfortable enough or you've lost too many people or they've been wounded or their stress level has gone up you get out, you come back. But you have two issues with that. You have a planetary infestation, though you can reduce this. You do have planetary infestation, and crucially, after a certain point, like about halfway through the game, after a specific mission, you have planetary annihilation. Like in this case, like just before the end game, is five days. What's going to happen is there's nuclear uh, nuclear armed satellites in orbit of this planet which has been put under quarantine and they're gonna obliterate everything on this planet now that is a bit insane from a historic perspective like what the hell how many nukes does Wayland Dutani have because let me tell you it would take tens of thousands of nuclear weapons to annihilate all life on a planet I mean I guess if you target the major population centers but you get the idea it would be a pretty hard um, thing to accomplish Especially when you're dealing with aliens, because, you know, they like to go down. Nuclear weapons don't necessarily have the best penetration, unless they, you know, it depends on the type of missile. But you get the idea. You got a certain amount of time, about, what, 20 days when this timer starts kicking. And planetary infestation, what that does is it means that you're going to encounter harder enemies from the very beginning. They're, they're going to be uh, more difficult to deal with. Also, alien aggression how fast they're going to hunt you, how many of them are going to hunt you, all that kind of stuff. So the more days you spend, because you can only deploy once a day, and, you, and sometimes not even that, but the more time you spend, the harder it's going to get, and eventually you will run out of time. Now, some other things to keep in mind from this particular menu. You have a bunch of resources over here. Yes, I'm going to call, call them resources. All of these are resources. 
So you have materials. Materials are used for production. You can build weapons and you can get supplies. Supplies are obviously limited. They're mission specific. Though you can, if you have supplies at the end of the mission, you will carry with, uh, them over. So supplies are medical supplies, tools, and sentry guns. And you can get those out. Uh, I'll talk about each of these specifically, but suffice it to say, I would say maxing out sentry guns before you deploy in a mission is the best thing because they're the r rarest thing to find in a mission. You can, but um, it de does depend. Like some missions don't have any. Many of them may have a few, but you, your sentry guns are probably your most important resource because they're the things that are actually going to kill aliens en masse. Not your marines, but the sentry guns. Which is pretty appropriate considering the aliens movie. Like you see those sentry guns like annihilating waves of aliens so they ran out of ammo. Anyway, uh, medical supplies are used for healing and also dealing with stress. Then you have tools. Uh, tools are used to repair turrets. They're used to open doors that are locked with computers. Uh, they're used to access certain consoles like cameras or giving you a map layout. Um, they're also used, uh, the biggest purpose of them actually is to weld the door. Like let's say you want to create a safe space, a safe room. You go in that room, you get your all your Marines in that room, and then you weld that door, and then now you have a safe space where you can rest and recover. And that's actually quite important. Uh, the game has a tutorial, but it, like, the problem with the tutorial is that it covers all the steps, but, like, you know, some of these things are so obvious that it's like, screw them, right? But the things that are important, like they're just thrown with, with everything. I think, like, they should have prioritized telling you about the important things as opposed to things that you know, anyone who's played video games for years would freaking know, like, oh, how do I move a character? I don't give a shit about it. I know how to move a char character in a game like this. What I don't know is that it is important to create those safe rooms necessarily. Uh, what I didn't know necessarily from the start is that creating those safe rooms from the, uh, from the very beginning is important because you have to manage your stress level. It's the most effective way of managing those stress levels. Then you have physicians. Uh, the way physicians work is like they help with healing. I'll get into that as I get in medical, medical quarters. Engineers, what engineers do is that they generate five materials per day. So materials are used to get tools, uh, you, and engineers help you create those passively. You can obviously find materials from missions, but it is important to get engineers. Uh, engineers come in two varieties. You have the human variety, of course, and then you have the simps. Now, you can only acquire the simps with a particular class if you have it on a mission. There's not necessarily that many simps. Like, I think I find three or four in the entire game, but it is important to acquire them. Uh, then you have xeno samples. Xeno samples are used for xeno technology um, to research it, to unlock it, and also to use it. Because the way xeno technology works is you've find the particular piece of technology, you go into the lab, you research it, that generally costs about 10. That costs uh, 10 Xeno samples, but then you want to use that, well, every single deployment, you have to spend two Xeno samples per technology. And there's quite a few of them, they do add up. So that's the general purpose situation. You have limited time, you have limited resources, you have to manage those resources. Now, going from right to left, the reason I'm doing it is because I'll be spending quite a bit of time talking about the barracks. Have a nice day. Definitely so in the lab, uh, there isn't a scientist poll. Um, sometimes you do get events, but they affect your physicians. Like there's like, oh, there's an accident in the lab. I think that at one point they wanted to have a scientist uh, resource, but then they decided to cut out. I say that based on the events, because like there's some events, you know, sometimes where you know scientists suffer something, and it's like you what you end up losing if you don't help them out like if you don't drop any for everything and help them out you lose physicians actually um, that that's what um, can end up happening there so uh, how the how do things work over here as I said you find xenotechnology generally from alien queens you'll be killing quite a few of them Though there is also Xenotech and crates. I think there's free crates in the entire game and the rest of them are acquired from particular uh, queens that will have them. And these will contain various, up, uh, various benefits, like alien blood is acid, so it will do damage to your guys if the aliens are killed next to you. And since aliens are trying to get in melee, you can imagine this happens a lot. Well, 
Anti-acid gel helps you with that, because as long as your guys have armor, and the way armor works, just to touch on that, like your guys have armor and HP, HP can be regenerated in a mission with medkits, armor cannot, it's a finite resource. But armor can protect you from any kind of damage, like armor doesn't need to be healed uh, in a med bay, for instance, post-mission. Health does. But yeah, it's fairly simple. You spend 10 Xeno samples per research. It's gonna take you a while to unlock all of this. Like some of this stuff is pretty late game. Um, and then two per each of these that you wanna use in a mission. Bye, ma in the medical oh, quarters, you have two tabs. You have your med bay where guys are healed. You shave off one day passively for the medical equipment and then you have a certain number of physicians. Like here I have six physicians total. I don't know how many of them are in the game as a whole. I I think I've recovered all the survivors that I could have found. So this might be, you know, there is there are certain events where we can gain more, uh, where you can find survivors. Because from the command you, deck, what can happen is like, oh, you want to go to the next day, and then when the next day uh, starts out, you'll get an event to find some random survivors. Or you can, but you lose the deployment. Or you can ignore those survivors and just go on your deployment. So I don't know how many physicians are in the game, but I think it's unlikely you're going to get more than you know, six or seven. Either way, each physician, what you can do, let's say I have Kaden Link over here. He's wounded. He's got seven days, so it will take seven days passively. But I can use each individual's physician to reduce this, we'll take care of this by, a, uh, by one day per action. And I can assign more and more, right? That's how physician work, uh, physicians work. Then you have the psychiatrist care unit. Uh, your soldiers get wounds, so any kind of HP damage they take will cause them to go into main bay. Like initially, it might be a couple of days, and then you know ranks up like seven, eight, ten days, depending on how wounded they've been. You really don't want your guys to be wounded in combat because you end up with a med bay that looks like this. Keep in mind, though, this is the end game on nightmare difficulty, the highest difficulty. But then you have your psychiatrist care unit. The way this works is that when you send your guys in combat, they gain stress. How does stress work? Well, um, you have an in-mission stress and then a campaign stress. And they are tied together. But basically, you need to try and keep stress levels low within the mission. Because if you don't, you're going to get uh, high levels of stress on the campaign side of things. So you have three levels of trauma, like you can get three different traumas. You can heal them up in the psychiatrist care unit. So basically a soldier that isn't wounded and but does have a level of stress. So they're available for deployment, but they might be, you know, have mental trauma. You can send them in, um, in the psych uh, psychiatrist uh, care unit, and this will heal two of these trauma points per day. Every free trauma point, you get the trauma level. And so that's a very negative trait. Now, I feel the developers, their intent was that your guys were going to get stressed out in missions, they were going to have high stress levels, and you're going to be dealing with trauma. But the reality of it all is you almost never need to send your guys over here, to be quite blunt about it, very, very rarely. Like over here, for instance, all of my guys over here, like of my entire marine roster has not reached like throughout this entire campaign which i have uploaded the vast majority of it on youtube just like two videos to do um throughout this entire campaign i have never reached the point of higher level than trauma one and even that was temporary there are ways of dealing with trauma because there are traits that help you with that like you get mines of steel which you should get very very quickly uh, I'll cover how you level class uh, characters in just a bit, though. But basically, here you might send guys to get healed for trauma if you need to. But this is like the last resort. You should never do so. Like, for instance, like Mines of Steel can automatically heal one trauma point per campaign turn. This, the Psychiatrist Care Unit can heal two. Generally not worth it. Can help you out in some situations, but you really, really don't want to end up here. I emphasize this. See you around. Then you have the Hello, workshop. Um, Need a gun the way the workshop works is fairly simple. You produce weapons and some equipment over here. Now, you don't produce guns individually like an XCOM. Like, oh, if you want, um, say, for instance, a heavy pulse rifle, you don't produce one pulse rifle, a uh, heavy pulse rifle. You produce it for everyone that can use it. The catch is that 
guy that your marines need a certain level and potentially a certain class to use them. So for instance, the smart gun can only be used by the gunner class, as an example. Or uh, the sniper rifle can only be used by the recon. But you have your primary weapons, uh, which everyone can use, like the pulse rifles and the plasma rifle later on. The plasma rifle is a level 10 weapon. It requires a level 10 on Marine that's using it. The way this baby works is that it's not necessarily going to be... It is a bit more damage than the heavy pulse rifle, but that's not really the important thing about this baby. The important thing is that it has an ability that can hit... That it has a beam ability that can hit everything in its path so this guy can this thing can melt enemies in its path though given it requires level 10 you can complete an entire campaign without uh, without getting it uh, then you have your secondary weapons don't really matter all that much like yeah you can get an smg as a secondary weapon but as i said it's not really important uh, to worry about anything over here by default, your guys have the service pistol, then they can get a revolver as you choose a class, because initially they'll start without a class as raw recruits, then you can choose a class for them, then they can use the revolver, and then later on, the SMG. The, these things just cost supplies like two, 100, then 200, then 300 for the really, really expensive stuff, like the plasma rifle over here for all its power costs 300 materials to make. Uh, but I would ar honestly argue that, well, the revolver can do a bit more damage because obviously it does have that damage spread, so it might do a decent amount of damage, but like secondary weapon may not be worth it. Like, I see no reason to ever pick up the SMG, for instance. Special weapons, however, are maybe. You do start with the shotgun. Like, you will start with the pulse rifle and the shotgun unlocked. Everything else you'll have to get yourself. Uh, you have a flamethrower, you have mines, you have RPG, sniper rifle. Let me just cut this short. What is actually important over here? Well, there are the following things. Um, the smart gun for gunners, obviously important. The heavy pulse rifle that any marine can use, except the gunners, also important. And I think the gunners can also use the heavy pulse rifle, though generally, obviously, you want the smart gun for pretty clear and obvious reasons, because it is a better weapon. I mean, it's roughly the same weapon, but it does have more... Um, it does have more ammo. It does have more uh, more ammo, and it does fire uh, more for each burst. But otherwise, it does do the exact same damage. But yeah, obviously, you want to use the smart gun in general. There are other benefits with it, just rather than just the stats here. So you want the smart gun, you want the heavy pulse uh, rifle, and if you have a, a mountain of materials to spend, you might want to get the plasma rifle really later on, because anyone can use the plasma rifle, not just uh, a particular class. Uh, but smart gun, heavy pulse rifle, I would argue priorities. Revolvers, maybe, but I never really saw a reason. Flamethrower, pretty important, and so and so is sniper rifle. Like essential, I would say sniper rifle, incinerator. Heavy pulse rifle and smart gun. Those are the only four things that really matter. Revolvers, maybe, but not too critical. Mines, I rarely, if ever, use them. I never saw a reason to do so. See you around. Hello, man. And then we finally get to the barracks over here. Here are the. Here's how the barracks works. You have five classes, but which of them matter? Which are the important? Well, all of them do, <laughs> for different reasons. Though some of them are better much earlier on. Some of them are high priority to acquire earlier on but all of them are important so uh you have the armory where you can level your marines and you have the training no, room. the training room pretty simple Trust to me. use pretty simple to understand like you get you can get raw recruits and you can you then assign sharp. them to, feel, int feel uh, to intensive training and this will give them a passive experience bonus every single turn like by default if a marine isn't wounded isn't injured is not going in psycho uh, psychiatric uh, care it, they are going to gain a bit of experience every single day but you can double this from one experience to two experience per day that's how it works and also it gives you an idea of how much experience you actually need in order to level up but as you might understand this uh, it is important to not get your guys wounded so armor matters, not getting damaged, not picking firefights, that is actually pretty important because 
keeping your guys healthy is crucial, not just in the sense like, oh, yeah, you're not wasting your guys spending in a mid bay. No, it means you're going to get higher ranked uh, Marines if they're just, you know, if they have time off. Now, intensive training gives them the double experience benefit, but there is a catch because obviously there is. Whenever someone is going for intensive training, even when you stop, but like right now, if I stop this, doesn't matter. What would happen? Looking for someone in particular is they would become exhausted. So when someone is down. exhausted, they can't be deployed. The way the exhausted effect works is that when you deploy someone on a mission, by default, you get tired of them. There is a trait that prevents that from happening, um, so you don't have to worry about that. But if you deploy a tired marine on a mission, they'll become exhausted, so you can't deploy them. There are also various events and training that can also cause that particular effect as well. Just be aware of that. Okay, gone on long enough. Let's talk about leveling, attributes, perks, uh, upgrades. Let's go over them. The most important uh, classes early on are recon, uh, or rather let's do it like this. There are five classes. We start with sergeants, because this is the order the game has. What do sergeants I do? Teach you, Marine. Well, Salute. let's talk about how the class system works. Once you gain, what is it, level two, three, whatever, doesn't matter. But once you gain a certain level, you'll be able to choose a class. You'll get the choice between two classes out of five in total. These classes are sergeants, gunners, recon, techers, uh, and medics. Out of those five classes, um, early on it's probably important to get sergeants, gunners, and recon, especially recon early on, but later on techers and medics can also be very useful. But let's go over what each this of them does. The sergeant is all about inspiration and command points. Command points are used for special actions like, oh, you want to use the flamethrower or the shotgun or you want to plant a mine or anything like that, you need command points. To increase your command points, you want sergeants, because the way classes work is you have your class attributes. These will be unlocked automatically. So a sergeant, for instance, gets a bravery bonus. Later on, he gets a reprimand ability, which freezes stress level. What does freezing stress level mean? Well, when you're engaged in firefights or when you're being hunted by the aliens in a mission, your stress will increase on your marines. But the reprimand skill can prevent that for 30 seconds. It does cost a command point, but guess what? Sergeants have ben a benefit to command points. And then you get encouraging speech, which when you're resting, like when you create the safe room and you're choosing the rest option, which creates a safe point, by the way, by the, with the default save options, you can you reduce more stress. That's what a sergeant does by default. Then you have a bunch of common attributes. These can give you a a variety of benefits like oh automatically healing trauma points no longer being affected tired getting armor all that kind of stuff i'm not going to cover all of these traits ign has a good guide going uh, a guide going over all of these point by point nor am i going to cover all the class attributes but suffice to say um, if you want to go over that list choose go for to the IGN, uh, ign guide i am going to tell you what is important to get early on and what is important to focus on later on one of the important common attributes that you really want to get early on is smart ass, because this allows you to open hack doors without requiring a tech expert. That is a pretty substantial benefit. So common attributes, getting smart ass on at least some of them, not all of them. Don't get it on all of them, it's a waste of time, but getting on one or two of them early on, pretty important. Then improving armor, removing the, um, the tired effect, giving you a trauma point benefit, those who matter. So focus on HP, focus on those kind of things. Then you have upgrades. The way upgrades work is that you have to spend materials to upgrade them on each Marine. This can end up being quite costly, as you might imagine. So if I want to say give Gem Rainer over here um, an extra ammo clip that he starts with, I would have to spend 30 supplies. But when we're looking at upgrades, there are general purpose upgrades like the ammo one, and then there's class upgrades. So sergeants, for instance, get maximum command points, regeneration of command points, 
uh, and regeneration of command points, and also bravery, so he increases bravery. Brave bravery helps with stress. That's essentially it. Like, the more bravery you have, like, he's got 15% bravery, um, so the stress damage, you take stress damage from our resources, this is reduced by the percentage of bravery. So if I were to increase his bravery by uh, by five over here, uh, and you have to hold it down, um, then that would obviously help with it. Like it is weird a bit that it is a percentage that it says here, a percentage when in reality it's like a flat, the way you increase this flat set, but you get that notion. Now, that's the sergeant. So he's really useful with stress, he's useful with bravery, he's useful with command points. Um, so it is important to get these guys because managing stress is an essential part of the game. Then, we have gunners. Gunners are the only ones that can Did even you smart gun. Salute. Uh, their, final, they, their attributes are as follows. Like, the first one that they'll unlock, when you unlock, when you make one a gunner, like Saeed Masani over here, you get the ability of using the smart gun. At level 6, you get the ability of increasing this membrane. At level 10, you uh, their firing rate increases the higher their stress, uh, from my understanding. Like, it doesn't say it here, but that's what it does. Upgrade-wise, you get the ability of getting advanced tracking system. This is why the smart gun can be pretty damn useful. Because what the smart gun does... Like this uh, gun can fire real quickly and a lot of uh, a lot of uh, a lot of bullets, and the advanced tracking system increases the accuracy. Then you can get a slow effect. You you can increase the slow effect of suppressive fire for the whole squad when using that, and you can also get a tripod for the smart gun. So the, what this does is it will make the smart gun a turret and the marine will use his pistol. Obviously, you can still, you know, pick up the smart gun once you're done holding a flank, but this can really help you add more firepower because you're basically sacrificing, you're, you're creating a turret, removing the gun from the marine, putting a turret and the marine is going to fire with the pistol. There's disadvantages with that, sure. One particular upgrade I'd say is pretty important is getting pouches because this allows you to get more tools and uh, medical supplies in a mission. Ammo, not necessarily too important, by the way. Like, really focus on things that help you on the campaign side of things as opposed to like, oh, you get an accuracy benefit. As I said, like, when you get into a firefight, you've kind of already lost. Having some benefits in firefights, like, I would say it's more important to get things that help you get more tools, uh, uh, tools in a battle or you know something that helps your entire squad then just like oh I get an extra a clip of ammo ammo can be found uh, very frequently though there are certainly a few missions where that can be an issue this one won't let you down. let's talk about medics I don't really have many medics I'd say medics can feel like a low priority tar uh, low priority class until you realize that there's actually significant advantages with having medics if you get a medic at level 10 like they're really an end game class not early game early game they're kind of meaningless to have but late game that's a completely different ball game especially if you can get the medic to level 10 why is that well a medic at level 10 will speed up the recovery time of all of your marines that you deployed in that mission with the medic if he's still alive of course you obviously don't want to lose someone uh, he will speed up the recovery time by 30%. That is an enormous amount. So if someone's injured for 10 days, he'll reduce it to, what, S uh, 7 days. Just if you can get them to, to level 10. That is a pretty significant amount. And keep in mind, recovery times do increase the more you play for the game. Or rather, the, m m the damage you're taking. Like, if you're taking a significant amount of damage, like, I think it's based on the damage you're taking, but... As you get into the end game, you have longer missions, you have marines that are more durable, you can heal more because you can carry more medkits, so your guys are going to take more damage. I also think it might be based on the level of your marines. Not entirely certain. Either way, medics can be useful in the late game because they have the following upgrades. I, I want to be clear, I didn't use that. I didn't use this, but 
when you're considering a guide, it's like you just got to consider, like, okay, what are the things I may have missed? So one of the things you can get, like, you can increase the HP of all Marines in the squad by one with combat drugs. And this is an upgrade. It's not a class trait. It doesn't require a level. This is something available very, very early on. You can get morphine which reduces stress by 30 when they are healed. Because when you're using a medkit, you're not reducing stress. And medkits can be used to reduce stress if you're popping in the drugs uh, to reduce the stress, or you can use medkits to heal. Generally speaking, it's better to use them for healing, but a medic will allow you to reduce stress and heal at the same time. It's obviously not the best way to reduce stress, but it can help you out. It only costs the materials to unlock. The point I'm going to get to here is like you want to level every class. Don't focus it on just one or two. Focus on all of them. You know, more sergeants, more gunners, more recon. Yes. But having a medic in every mission, having a tech expert in every mission, that is going to be important as well. Though I would say the medic is probably like the most end game of all of them, but he can still be pretty uh, useful. Uh, and you can also recover HP when you're resting in a particular mission if you do have a medic. After the medic, going back on the, uh, this list, we have recon. If there is any class, I would say you should prioritize, prioritize. Like the first Marine you level, if he can go recon, go recon. For no other reason, there's only one reason. It's not the class attributes, or rather it is one of the class attributes is ability to equip the sniper rifle. The extra speed from flat fast deployment or uh, increasing detection time. So the way detection works is like when an enemy sees you, you'll start seeing a line towards your Marines. How long that how long it takes an enemy to see you, you can um, increase that time with things like infiltration tactics and certain other things as well. But what is important about recon is the sniper rifle. So, what the sni so you can equip the sniper rifle special weapon. You do need to craft it, to be clear on this but and then you can get a silencer this is a stealth strategy game there are not many stealth tools in this stealth strategy game there's only two actually there is the silencer and there is the flamethrower and the flamethrower only works against the alien eggs the face huggers the silencer is the way you way you can clear entire levels even without being detected. Now, the chances of you not being detected in an entire mission are very low, but getting a recon very quickly is an essential aspect. This character, McDonald over here, was one of the starting characters that you do have when you begin the game. She's always gonna be female, but from the start, how she looks, all that's gonna uh, change. Like, uh, though, of course, who gets the first upgrade and all that, who gets to become the recon, different discussion. That is randomized, but, Getting a recon early on this is essential. Down. It doesn't have to be a high recon. You don't have to prioritize leveling. The only thing that matters about the recon is the silencer. Like, whereas a medic might be important later on, um, might be important later on, but it's not that great early on, a recon is very good early on, and it doesn't actually matter for you to level them. That's a crucial aspect. Like. You could prioritize leveling, let's say, two free medics, let's say two medics in your entire campaign, two sergeants, high-level sergeants. But you can get away with leveling just one, uh, just one recon to high level, and you can have a bunch of them that are very, very low level. Same with gunners, by the way, because like the main benefit of the gunner really is the ability of using a smart gun and all the upgrades you can get. So getting a silencer is so important and, I, and you can clear significant portions of a level and avoid detection avoiding detection is pretty important in this particular game and finally we have the techer the what techer you, um Salute. he's not gonna be great in combat i mean he, obviously you do still have uh you do still have um uh, you do still have an assault rifle or a heavy pulse rifle but what is important about the techer is this, the, their, the axes they give you. So they, give, they have hacker by default. You don't need smart ass to open doors. That's just the start though, because there's more things. At level six, they can overcharge your center gun. So if you're in a really messy situation and you want, um, and you want your center guns to actually do a lot more damage, that's what the techer can do. You only need one, I would argue. 
but that one it can be important under the assumption you're not going to lose people in missions and you really shouldn't i've done an entire campaign granted i did reload did I a lot you, but that Salute. was just because i didn't know what i was doing in terms of special upgrades he gets a drone now the drone can get the submachine gun it's kind of crappy and it does consume a lot of ammunition so it's not really too important but what is important is the drone can uh, the drone can be a distraction for aliens, so let's say you're being hunted by aliens, you can send the drone to a certain part of the map and have it act as a distraction. But more importantly, the drone can be used to weld or breach doors from a distance. So you don't have to move your entire, entire squad or your marine to a particular door to open or close it. That can be pretty damn useful. But it's really the hacking ability. Here's the thing, though, that isn't necessarily said here the attacker can also do something else and I believe it's um, only available to him I could be wrong on this but the attacker can uh, recover sims so what attackers do so there's sims there's robots from various missions that you can recover they're not counted as the survivor objectives like generally when you have survivors you get objectives to recover them the, the, the sims are not counted as that uh, the techs, the techers are the only ones this that can recover those. I, I think that's uh, that's the case, but it's not necessarily something that's said in any of this. But if you want simps, a simp is an engineer. That's the role they have. If you want extra engineers for simps, you want techers, and that's the you essentials really the for the various classes. Obviously, there's a, more things to talk about over here, but ba my point is. Having a tacker that's low level, like having a, a recon, a gunner, a tacker that's low level, those are pretty important. Sergeants and medics are more high end. Though sergeants can be useful earlier on as well. Like I'd say sergeants are more mid to late and medics are certainly late game. But leveling all of them is going to be pretty important. So if you're playing the long game, yeah, I would get two recons early on, having two sniper rifles, silent sniper rifles, crucially. Save your resources, like save your initial resources to unlock that. Having two sni silent sniper rifles is going to save you a lot of hassle. Operation but why is that? Well, here's areas. how the game plays. And I'm going to deploy literally on the very first map. As as I said, I've beaten Understood. the game at this point. I don't care Uploading about the saving here. And when you initially go to a mission, you're only going to have limited deployment slots as you unlock more and more of the map. Uh, you will open more of it up. There's a particular upgrade that exists over there. So I am going to go over here by the left. Okay. So this is a, ver uh, a variety squad. Now, as you deploy, you choose your squad. And you should look at the advanced info. You always want the ability, like what is important is the ability to open doors. Like the attacker is going to give it here or having someone as smart as that's also important. Other things to look at when you're looking to deploy is make sure you don't have uh, too many negative traits. Like there is a negative trait uh, that there is undisciplined. So if you have two people with undisciplined, you're going to lose max command points. Like there are certain traits that work like that. So you want to avoid having that particular situation. The negative traits that all Marines start with can be removed by a particular attribute that you unlock uh, later on, that you can unlock later on. So there, it's called simply redemption, which removes a Marine's negative trait. And most of the time I would say it's worth it, though not necessarily all of the time. Um, and here you choose your guns, like um, you need level six for the heavy pulse rifle, you just start with a regular pulse rifle, all that kind of stuff. Having at least one sniper rifles, one or two flamethrowers, that is pretty important. Flamethrowers to deal with eggs, because you can't use the sniper rifle on eggs. You can use the flamethrower to clear out the eggs. That's actually the only thing I've used it for. Like, I haven't really used it against the aliens. It can scare them off, slow them down a bit, but it's like, why wouldn't I want lay suppression, suppressive fire instead of using the fucking flamethrower, which costs, <laughs> which costs uh, command points anyway. Then you go select your inventory. And in your inventory, you have two tabs. So you have tools, met, uh, medical supply, sentry guns. Always max out the sentry guns before a mission. And then you have Xenotech. With Xenotech, there are, all of them are useful one way or another. And if you're going on a difficult mission, yeah, go for all of them. But the things that are essential, stas stasis grenade, which you can get from very early on, is 
pretty important. You have regular grenades from the start. This puts a 50% movement penalty. When you're dealing with aliens, you never want to get hit by them. Stasis grenades are going to be pretty essential with that. So is suppressive fire. Um, extraction device, not too important. Like, if you should generally avoid getting too close to face huggers, suffice to say. And generally speaking, they're pretty obvious where they are. It can happen, however. Uh, anti acid gel, very crucial as well. Um, Hive tranquilizer, though that's very uh, late game. Xeno zip, all that. Like, these. Free upgrades are like basically end game options to make your life easier in the end game, but early on you're gonna get uh, you're gonna get anti acid gel and you're gonna get stasis grenade. There's also an upgrade that increases the armor, that, the one I missed in this particular mission that you could have gotten early on. It costs two per each Xeno sample, so just remember it. And then you deploy. Initially, you only you start with the ARC, then you get proper. which can use five marines. So you start with the ability of deploying four, then you'll get five as you go for the game. It, it, this will always happen. Now, one thing to keep in mind that I do want to talk about is you always never use, never try and uh, always try to not run out of ammo and always have one tool, one med kit in your bag. Like unless you're certain that you are not going to spend them because there are certainly some mission objectives which are going to require C4. Ammo is generally obviously used for, you know, re uh, for um, for uh, reloading weapons, but it's also used for certain contextual explosives to blow up certain walls, which can also happen story-wise. It kind of sucks when you end up in that story moment where you've used up all your ammo and to progress the mission. You do have to get uh, you you do have to get some ammo further because you need C4 to blow up a wall. That is probably one of the worst things to happen. Now, in missions, you will obviously encounter aliens prowling around. You want to avoid them best you can. I don't think you gain any benefits from engaging in combat. I mean, you can gain some experience. And maybe at some points in certain missions, it is worth it to... Uh, it is worth it to just get involved against a huge horde of aliens sometimes. Uh, for experience to level up your guys, but remember you're gonna spend ammo, you're gonna spend resources, and you're gonna start increasing the aggression level. When an alien detects you, what they're going to do, like let's say you encounter an alien, you kill it, right? No problem. Well, the alien hive is gonna launch a hunt. It's gonna show up here as a yellow bar. Now, there are certainly uh, certain tiers with that hunt. So, while a hunt is active, aliens are aggressively prowling. They're following you where you're going, where you've been. That's how that works. Now, you can avoid them. You can launch distraction. Like, for instance, you start with a motion tracker, uh, tracker, which you can destroy, for instance, over here. This can cause a distraction. And you can use the drone as a distraction. You also have that APC. The APC, the aliens will ignore it. It can kill a lot of aliens and it won't be detected by it. So for instance, over here, um, while I am on the ground floor, on the first floor, and the APC can be moved from location to location, which it can be, I can just move around to deal with the various prowling enemies without being detected. And we do have some aliens that are going to show up over there. Let's get involved into a firefight to to talk about this. Now you can run or you can just move very, very slowly. See that uh, every time like uh, for an alien to detect you <laughs> kind of I want to be seen, damn it. Okay, let's just shoot at it. Whenever an alien detects you, you'll start being hunted. This mirror will start going down. But if you reach a certain threshold over here, you'll get a massive alien onslaught. And alien onslaught is going to be a massive amount of aliens that are going to start showing up your way to try and kill you. 
when that onslaught happens, this is what you do. I'm not gonna trigger one in this particular mission, but you find a nice little corner. You can open the map because there are like these uh, particular zones. You set, lay down suppressive fire, you throw grenades in a choke point. And you open your map, you pay attention to where the aliens are coming from. In this particular case, they can only come through here. This is the only... Well, they have an entrance here, but they don't, really. Because it's blocked. Because that door is blocked. So they can only attack me through this particular point. So what you want to do is form a choke point. Sentry guns with suppressive fire with flares. Flare increase. Flares increase accuracy. Suppressive fire slow down enemy. Grenade launchers with the upgrade, the Xenotech, can also slow them down. In open spaces, you may even call in, uh, <laughs> you may even call in gunship support because you do have a gunship. And unfortunately, most missions are just going to be in open spaces. The longer you spend in a mission, the more enemies will start prowling around. Now, once the enemies have launched a massive onslaught, it will be a wave that spawns from one of their little hives. So, for instance, the these indicators there, those red indicators will show you where alien hives are. Or rather, alien spawn location on alien hives. And in a massive onslaught, one of these locations will be picked at random and enemies will start... A massive horde of enemies will start will spawn in like 10 20 seconds from there to attack you it will always come for you you can't avoid it it may take you longer uh, for it to attack uh, to to reach you but it will always reach you so you need to be prepared the moment that happens you just hunker down either near the apc or in a corridor like this like this would actually be a great uh, kill zone they will go through welds. Like you can weld uh, these, um, you can weld these doors. But when aliens are on the hunt and they know you're past the door, and you're trying to weld it, or you're you've already welded it, they will break through it. You can't stop an onslaught. You have to defeat it. But you can stop a hunt. Because when you weld two doors like this, or just one door, usually it's better to just weld one door because it's one tool per door that you want to weld. Uh, when, you've, when you've secured the room like this, any hunt will stop. When you're in a hunt, the stress level of your Marines will go up. When you're in combat, the stress level of your Marines go up, goes up. The more stress, and you have stress levels in a mission, and then you have trauma points outside of the missions. The more stress you gain in a mission, the worse it's gonna get. Like you, I, I've seen so many YouTube videos of other people, where they have their Marines constantly on red. You get temporary negative effects with high stress levels, and then you get massive amounts of trauma points. Keep the stress low. Never try and never uh, go over a hundred or two hundred because if it goes like I've, I don't, I've rarely let it go over two hundred. Some people have let it go for like <laughs> some people have let it go to four hundred. I think that's the max, right? Because you have like level zero to one, then one to two, three, four, right? Um, don't do that. It is a really bad decision. Like just find rooms to rest, create these safe zones and rest. Now, resting generally gives you benefit points. Like it reduces the stress in this case by 150, uh, regenerates all your command points, heals hemorrhages. So if your Marines are bleeding, uh, and other special effects. Like in this case, I'm gonna get one HP recovery per for each Marine because I have a medic and I have a drug addict, so he's got a negative trait, so he's gonna consume one medical supply. Stress, uh, these rooms also give you a save point. Try and do whatever actions you want be so before the save point. Depends on how you wanna play, right? I, I think like the developers feel like as players, we should just roll with the dice and I'm like, no, <laughs> the, the reason is because like if you know how every mission is going to unfold and what bullshit the developers are going to throw your way, sure. But it isn't like it isn't the sandbox. It isn't randomly generated. It's whatever bullshit a particular mission has in store for you that you are going to encounter. It sounds simple. 
it, it really is not necessarily as simple because like this level has already been cleared and the alien friend level is easy it's low like the aliens haven't really been hunting me but as you go for a mission the more time you spend and you can spend one two hours in a mission the more time you spend in a mission the more aliens you're gonna encounter and kill. You're gonna use snipers however much you want, but eventually this per this hunted level is just gonna go through the freaking roof and you won't be able to control it. And you're gonna get to onslaughts, then you're gonna get to a medium aggression level where more aliens are gonna start prowling uh, around the level. And then event and also some special aliens like Centurions, which are mini bosses, uh, Centurions and Praetorians, Are also going to spawn like two of each when you get to that threshold so there's three levels the game literally tells you that if you get to the highest level which is hard so if you get to the highest level of aggression is like you've lost you should get the hell out of there you can win a mission even after you've gotten hard but you just have so many aliens running around that makes your life very difficult so initially when you go on a mission level of aggression is low as you get more and more hunted, as the threshold increases, you go from easy to medium, then you eventually get close to hard. You deal, you can only deal with two onslaughts in a mission. That's because those are the the onslaughts represent the thresholds. Like they represent when you're going from easy uh, to uh, to medium, and then to hard. That's what they really represent. You can increase how much time this takes. You can decrease the amount of time a hunt takes you can end the hunt by creating a safe space which is pretty important or sometimes you might want to trigger it deliberately why would you ever want to trigger an onslaught de deliberately well because there might be a main story objective that you might have to do later on and <laughs> you might have to go through an area and you know you're going to encounter aliens in that area so you just and you're close to an onslaught so you kind of want to trigger an onslaught before going there because if you trigger onslaught when you've got another objective things uh, will not necessarily go very very well for you there's also some aliens that well hunt in the walls so over here i know that an onslaught is going to trigger always pay attention to this bar so i know an onslaught is going to trigger soon enough there's no way to avoid it and i'm just going to hunker down in a prime defensive position. I'm just gonna show how you defeat an onslaught. You find a corridor like this, ideally a corridor as long as this, but even a shorter one will work. You set up your turrets. By default you can get four, you can increase it to five or even longer than that. You can also upgrade these, like um, to increase their damage and give them suppressive fire turrets with suppressive fire. But it does cost one tool each, and only a techer can do it. If he has an upgrade, so if he's rank six. I may not actually get it over here. <laughs> Silly. All right, deliberately trigger, triggering alien hunts. And also going to use the reprimand skill to freeze the stress level. Like when you're being hunted like this, you reprimand can be a really, really good skill to use. And we're just gonna set up uh, suppression zones. It is annoying that you can't uh, select which one of your marines is going to do it, because obviously you'd want the guy with the smart gun uh, to always do it, but fine. We just uh, deal with it. And there is the massive onslaught of en enemies. In this case, it has chosen this particular level. Any aliens that are close by will also attack you or any active aliens already will attack you so let's say you're traversing a room 
um, or you might be hunted by a bunch of aliens in nearby rooms. They're going to know where you are when an onslaught is triggered, and they're go going to come for you. This is how they swarm you. The onslaught itself, you might survive right when you form, because it gives you enough time to form a defensive position. But if you do trigger an onslaught where you're not in a prepared position, the immediate, immediate aggression that you're going to get is going to screw you over. Uh, so over here, I have set up, so over here I have uh, set up a very, very strong defensive position. I'm going to use Reprimand again. You know, this is the annoying thing. I, there we go. At least the turrets have suppressive fire. So here come the aliens. There's, there is the mass support. Gonna just throw a grenade over there. It is important to slow them. It doesn't matter how much your grenades are going, uh, how much damage your guys are going to do, how much damage your turrets. Like turrets can't slow them by default. And even if when they can, it's not going to be good enough. And after each onslaught, there will be a hunt. So you can increase your stress level due to an onslaught because you've got the initial hunt that triggered the onslaught. Then you've got the. Uh, uh, th then you've got so you've got one hunt to trigger it then a hunt after so in this case I really really need to rest and those are the things you need to know right go for the uh, priority though having multiple gunners multiple recons especially can be important uh, having high level sergeants high level medics that's also useful I, I would argue far more useful than anything else. Cosine here, signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications, and stay tuned for more. Uh, a final point, just to say this. How much should you try and complete in a mission? Well, I would say that at most, you should try and do a mission in like free goes and free deployments. Though you do have a lot more luxury early on before the apocalypse timer than after it triggers. Keep that in mind. And see you next time.